Hello, in this video I just want to show the workflow I've been using for the past several years to do my multi-camera edits for my wedding projects. So I'm using Premiere Pro along with the Pluralize plugin, which the newer version, Pluralize 4, is built right into. They made an extension that goes right into Premiere Pro, so you don't have to round trip it. You don't have to export the XML anymore, do it in another program, and bring it back in. It's all done within Premiere Pro. So to get started, I just have Premiere Pro open here. I'm going to make a new project. Always make sure you know where that project is going to live, so I'm just going to do that real quick. I like to put my project folder within the folder of the project itself, and I'm just going to normally I would name it. I'm just going to name it example today because it's an example, but normally I name it whatever the name of the wedding is, just for organizational purposes. Keep everything else the same. And now once I'm in here, we're going to go ahead and import the folders. So I always organize my folders, audio, camera A, camera B, camera C if I have it, a music folder for external music. Right now we're just going to worry about these three folders right here and bring those in. So my audio is my external audio from microphone. So I have two lav mics that I use. I, I put one on the groom and I have another lav mic. In this case, it's a uh, church ceremony. So it's on the pulpit so you can hear the readings. So you hear both... Uh, the readings and the gospel and the homily are all recorded with really high quality audio. And of course, once you have your folders imported with your files inside of it, it's also important in Premiere Pro, especially you long time users know that you need to generate the peak audio files. And especially for this technique, you need that audio already read by the program. So on your bottom right here, you'll see the generating peak audio files for all the files. Once that's done, then we know we are ready to go ahead and start the process. So first, I'm going to come over here. I'm going to open up my camera A. I want to make sure, first of all, that I'm organized by uh, file name. You can just do that by clicking on the name here, so that way we're going in order. And I also like to see my media duration, because I know the longest things are going to be um, my ceremony. Now, I shot this in 4K, so you can see that the each clip is only 5 minutes, 59 seconds each. And there's actually a bunch of them here. If I double click on this, we'll see. There's our first clip here. We can see we also have some color correcting to do later on, but we're not going to worry about color correcting in this video. We're just going to go ahead and worry about the syncing of the audio files. So now that I have identified my camera A, first of all, I need to make a timeline sequence here. So I kind of cheat in, in Premiere. I used to know all my settings and all that with the new sequence, but there's so many different kinds of sequences, and honestly, I just like to make it based off the file, unless I know I want to downscale this or not, but we're going to make this easy today. We're just going to base it off of this file type. So I'm just going to do this simple right click, you know, and create a new sequence from clip and let it create it the right thing. And then I'm going to go ahead and make sure I rename that sequence though. And not only that, but I want to take that outside of the folder. I want that out here. I might even make, usually I make another bin just for those. And I'm going to go ahead and delete what I put in there already. And we're going to come over here and we're going to select all of the ceremony ones. I think even this one right here might be the very end of the ceremony. So we're going to click on the first one and then shift click on the last one and bring them all over as a group. And over here on the timeline, I'm going to hit the backslash key to zoom out so you can see everything. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Barely makes it in there for ten clips. And now we're going to go back uh, over here, camera B, and do the same thing. So camera B, we just want to make sure we're only getting uh, the ceremony because if we go too far, we're going to get into the reception. So I'm going to move around here and figure out which one's my last one. Usually camera B I have up in the choir loft, like in this case, so it, it runs a little bit longer than the rest. It's okay if we get extra. I'm going to shift click again and then bring that over to my V2 and audio 2. So you can see, even see if I zoom out even further, that takes up, there's some, definitely an extra clip there that's not going to get used at all, but that's okay for right now. And now coming to my audio, here's my two lobs. And now I use the Tascam DLs, uh, which are nice because they also do a minus 10 dB track or my 6 dB, I'm sorry, 
uh, so that it's a little safety record just in case you have peaking. I usually don't need to use them. I haven't actually used the safety record at all, but I, I still do it because audio doesn't take up that much room and why not? So I'm going to drag my lav A to audio track three and my lav B to audio track four. It actually creates number four because by default Premiere only makes three audio tracks. Now that these are all here, it's a very simple process. You come to Window, go to Extensions, and select Pluralize. Now, of course, you need to have already downloaded and installed the Pluralize extension for this to work. Uh, you can try the demo to see how you like it, and then I've I've owned this for probably 10 years now. I've had it since like version two, maybe. I just don't know how to live without it anymore inside Premiere, anyways. So we're gonna go ahead and click on that. It's gonna open this little window. And very simply, I mean, there is a gearbox here. I can, you know, color unsynchronized clips, uh, move unsynchronized clips to then. I do not like this because sometimes if it has a problem figuring it out, it's just going to take something from the middle and throw it all the way to the end, which is going to mess up your timing. And there's also this create uh, sequence of audio replace. I'm not doing that either because actually the reason why I like this setup is I want all those audio tracks there because I'm going to use a blend of all my audio sources together to make my final recording. So I wanna make sure, you know, I could have five, six different audio tracks. I might drop one of the cameras, but I might keep the other camera in there, plus the two lobs. So I wanna keep all of them in there at some point. And that's why I like this method, because that way I'm not replacing anything. I'm gonna have all my audio to edit with afterwards. So I'm gonna go ahead now, hit the synchronize button, and now it's gonna go through, and it's doing the synchronization based off the audio. And the reason why I do pluralize over like the built-in stuff that's built into Premiere Pro is that because I'm using so many clips for each track, you know, I'm using 10 and like 11 or 12 for the other track, it doesn't really handle it that well, I found, uh, unless they've updated it recently, but usually what happens is that it's gonna create a different uh, camera angle for every single video clip, so you're gonna end up with 10 different angles to choose from just for camera one, versus just having the one angle and the second angle. So it's, right now I'm just switching one, two, one, two, or if I had three cameras, it'd be one, two, three, one, two, three. If Premiere Pro did it, I'd have 30 different angles to choose from, and that's not an efficient way to edit. It's going to take up too much resources, and it's just not the right way to do it. So this, it's almost complete now, 83%. So it doesn't take look long. Look, it's only been 30 seconds, I think, uh, once it gets set up and going here. Now, I didn't time it, but that was definitely less than a minute. Definitely less than two minutes. Definitely less than the 30 minutes I used to spend doing this manually back in the day using like camera flash references and things like that to try to sync it by sight and sound waves, which was, especially with tape back in the day, you had slippage, so it never worked right. So I can X out that window now, and you see I have a new timeline. So here's my original that we started off of, and here's my ceremony, and I ha gave the synced, underscore synced afterwards, so you know it's the synced one. And now the one thing to note, and I forgot to do this earlier, is that whatever folder or bin you have to be in in your project area is where it's gonna put that new timeline so make sure you keep yourself organized and put that where you know you want it to be now we're not done yet so we have everything organized but we're not ready for multicam and also we can see we have this extra stuff here so i can go ahead i'm going to move this up to here get my blade tool out i'm just gonna oops slice through all this delete it do a little ripple delete just to get that out of the way so now we go ahead and select it i can just click and drag, you do Command A or Control A if you're on a PC. Right click on here and we're going to nest. So we're gonna nest the files together. Uh, you should probably get this a name. Ceremony nested, nested ceremony, however you wanna keep yourself organized. It's gonna show up in your left side here so it's another sequence there. And now that we've done that, that's interesting, I don't know why it moved up to the top, that's weird. We're gonna right click on that again and make it go to multicam enable. And now it's a multicam sequence. So now that we have our multicam ready to go, we need to also, you want to see the multicam because we can't just edit without seeing multicam. So we go to our wrench in our program window and right here near the top, there is a multi camera option. And now we're going to have our multi camera view on the left and our program out on the right. And it's very simply, I'm just going to mute these tracks real quick just so we don't hear them. Um, while I'm playing, but you can see what happens is as I'm playing, I can now just hit camera one, 
camera two, camera one, camera two. And as I make those cuts, we'll zoom in here on the timeline, it's making those cuts for me. So there's my cuts. You can always right click and change which angle anyone them is on. You can also back it up and redo a whole edit. You can also choose your rolling edit tool here and you can come between clips and change your edit point. So if you cut too early or too late, you can always touch it up afterwards. So I usually like to go through and do all my cuts first and then I'll come through again and touch up all the edit points. I'll just come through and preview all the edit points to see if I need to go forward or back a little bit. And then afterwards I can come through and edit my audio. So I can come and I can make these tracks a little taller. So then I can come back and I can probably like mute my B camera because that was up in the choir loft, it's probably too far away, and I can unmute my other microphones. And I'm gonna have, we can skip ahead a little bit here. Let me zoom out. Yeah, it's probably a good idea at some point to test to make sure that you're in sync by going to like where someone's talking. And my body over so that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. So she looks in sync, but again, we can adjust these audio levels because we have the lav from her. I also have, this is my shotgun mic on my camera, on camera one. This is the built-in mic on camera two. Um, and then this is the lav mic on the pulpit, which is cam uh, lav A and lav B here, which is a little quieter, is the microphone on the groom. Uh, so we're gonna mix those up and down. Right now, I probably wouldn't want this one up on the groom because he's too far away. But I'm gonna have a mix of those and we're gonna get nice, clean audio with that. So that's, that's kind of like my, my method of doing it. I like to bring everything in where I want it to be on the timeline first, sync it using Pluralize, nest it, make it a multi-camera track, enable that, view the multi-camera, do all your cuts first, and then come through and do your uh, audio edits afterwards. One thing to note, because like I said, I'm using, so I use the GH4, Lumix GH4s for this, shooting in 4K, if you look right here, if I zoom in on this spot right here, you're going to see there is a little gap between that. So any any of the cameras uh, that do do break up audio tracks, a lot of them will have a, like a frame or two loss in between the stopping and starting a new track. So when you're doing your multi-camera edits, you're always going to have to make sure you're cutting away from that camera before you get that spot or else you're going to have a blank spot when you get there. And of course, we don't want to have a blank spot on our video, especially if we're doing this for, well, you never want a blank spot in your video, but especially if you're doing it for a couple, they don't want to all of a sudden have a black frame in the middle of, it, of their wedding ceremony. Even though it's going to be momentary, you still want to make sure you, you clean that stuff up. So then, you know, I'd probably go through, and if you want to, like I said before, I need to clean up the color on this. That's what you're nested. You come back to my nested ceremony, and you can open to this, and this is it beforehand before we broke it out so I can come in and do my color correction on both v1 and v2 afterwards or beforehand whichever however you want to operate um, it's the same color correction you do for any kind of clip and then you can copy and paste that to the rest of the clips uh, but that is how I go ahead and do my multi-camera edits for my wedding videos I always start with my ceremony first and then I'll go ahead and do my introductions and first dance and toast like that um, I like usually like to start with the ceremony because it's the biggest chunk and I like to get the biggest thing out of the way uh, first because I know this is going to take a couple hours to do because especially with a church ceremony like this just going through it the first time it's going to take me an hour just to do the cuts once I get everything synced up and then to go do through the touch-ups and the audio edits it takes another hour or so two hours to get everything done uh, the right way before I can bring it in to my final timeline so that is how I use Premiere Pro with Pluralize to sync up my video for multi-camera edits for my weddings. Um, I hope you found this helpful. If you did, please hit the subscribe button for more tutorials in the future. Thanks.